Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Mike Vandersteen. And whether you're purchasing a car, a land, home, need a, uh, a birth certificate, and the list goes on and on, you're going to need the assistance of our Register of Deeds office, one of 22 departments in Sheboygan County. And today we're very pleased to have Ellen Schleicher with us, our Register of Deeds. Ellen, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for, thank you for having me. Ellen has a tremendous staff and a lot of responsibilities. She started as Register of Deeds, I think, was it 2005? Uh, January 6, 2006. January 6, 2006. Mm -hmm. And how the time goes. Fast. Ellen, why don't you begin by sharing with our viewers a little bit about yourself and, and how it was that you became the Register of Deeds for Sheboygan County? Um, well, I live in Tonalima with my husband, Mike. Um, we have four children. And um, my last one is graduating this year. I'm kind of excited about that. She'll mm -hmm. be going on to Oshkosh. So, um, but along with that, we have our, the, what the children were involved with was 4-H and FFA. So I was involved with, a lot with them. Um, I also am involved with Rebuilding Together Sheboygan, which is a organization that goes into uh, low-income homes and helps fix them up. Kind of like Habitat for Humanity, but not quite a whole new home. It's just um, going in and painting and uh, replacing windows and doors and stuff like that. That explains why nearly every day you're walking in with car hearts and the tool belt sure, on. I, I never sure. quite yep. put two and two together there. Excellent. <laughs> and the back seat is full of, uh, you know, caulk guns and sure, sure. everything else. Outstanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's nice so, though. I didn't but know you that's were a, doing that. Yeah, that's a, that's a good, uh, good project. Um, I also serve on the Meat Animal Sale Committee, which is uh, involved with the Sheboygan County Fair at the fairgrounds and work there for the, the weekend of Labor Day. Um, I became Register of Deeds uh, when the Darlene Navis retired mm -hmm. and um, the governor, had, they put out an application for um, Register of Deeds and I applied and was appointed. Subsequently, um, had to run for, uh, or did that for a year and then ran and then um, again, ran again, and won my second term in 2008. And from my standpoint, I've been doing a wonderful job. I've been a breath of fresh air for the department and the county. And I know you're very busy. Please touch on some of the roles and responsibilities that a Register of Deeds has. Well, the Register of Deeds office um, records all less pendants, uh, foreclosures, uh, all mortgages, deeds, um, tax liens, um, name changes, uh, whatever, you, whatever, pretty much anything that goes on in the county that goes through the Register of Deeds office well, as far as land records. Um, we record them, we, we uh, file them, we, um, we have them you know, in computer, and uh, we help the public when they need to help, have help to find those records. It seems to me in the administration building, your office has more contact with the public than anyone that, I, that, that I've noticed other than the treasurer when it's tax time. I was gonna say, probably during tax time, the treasurer has much more, um, right. but we have more constant um, uh, public. We have genealogists that come in. Um, we have, if you need a vital record, your birth, uh, marriage, or birth, marriage, or death records, we also issue those and, and keep them in safekeeping. Um, so our office is usually pretty busy. How many staff work in your department and about what is your annual budget? Our um, staff uh, consists of me and my office supervisor, Nyla Bourne, and then we have six other um, staff members. And our ad annual budget is right around $700,000 right this year. Um, however, most of our we do not use any tax levy. Um, so far, we have um, been able to generate enough income that it covers our, our, our expenses, plus we give money back to the tax levy. And I hope everyone noticed how you kind of smiled when you shared that, and mm -hmm. it is something to smile about. And I don't want any of our viewers to think that this is the norm. Ellen's Department, Register of Deeds, is the only one that doesn't rely on any property tax levy. They do 
have enough fees to cover the cost of operating. And as you said, we hope that we're able to maintain that. We wish that more of our other departments, like clerk of courts and others, could operate like that. But it certainly helps the property taxpayer that you're able to operate without relying on tax levy to do so. Ellen, you mentioned earlier a lot of different folks come into your office looking for assistance. And I know a number of people from the business community come in and look for documents. What what is their main focus? What type of folks are you seeing from the business community coming in? What are they looking for? Well, the banks and um, it's usually the banks and credit unions, uh, attorneys, title people. Um, the title people do the searches for whenever you buy a home, you have and you, you take out a mortgage, they do a title search to make sure that you're protected. Um, as a buyer, uh, to make sure there's no liens on that property or, or anything like that. So mostly it's title companies um, that are hired by banks and a lot of attorneys come in also and do their own title search. Um, genealogists come in to try and find you know, where their family lived and um, it gets kind of interesting when you start talking to the genealogist about how they start with one name and go down back through. Um, but we, we do have a lot of interest in genealogy in our office also. How far back can someone go if they're looking to research their family tree? We do have some that can, they can go back. We have records back to 18, 1848. Um, our birth records and some of those records are a little bit sketchy. The land records are more consistent. Um, but the they can go back that far. We do have some genealogists that have gone back to their, the old country, back to Germany, or back to their fam, you know, back to their families back there. So, mm -hmm. they interact a lot with uh, European countries also. Now, I think just the name itself implies register of deeds. You're recording a lot of documents, and. Um, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. It's not as just as simple as coming up to the front counter and dropping it off and saying, please record this. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot that happens. Please walk through some of the general steps involved with recording a, um, a, a deed or if someone purchases a property. And generally, a person will go to a lawyer and have an attorney and have their document, their deeds made up or their mortgages or the bank does mortgages. But they come into our office and by statutes, Everything that comes in gets, a, gets uh, a number assigned to it, and they're recorded per that number. Um, that's a way that is fair for you know, the, the businesses coming in and the person walking off the street. Um, for a deed or a mortgage, it gets a number, it gets, it gets, we look it over, um, record it, then it gets scanned, indexed, uh, re-looked at, verified, and then we mail it back, generally back to the customer. Um, birth, death, and marriage records, you can come in, fill, in, fill out a form, and um, we, we can get those records for you within five, five, ten minutes. So uh, we're stream, streamlining that a lot. But. So you can, you can get the document pretty quickly, but to actually go through the recording process how long does that take? The, right now, we are, our turnaround time is about five to six days. Outstanding. So um, I know at we one point, seven, eight, ten years ago, it was a couple of months. Right in the peak, you know, there's right. there's times when, but that is they rely, our, you know, the banks and stuff rely on, on on us to get those records recorded and scanned and in the computer as as quickly as possible because. The title companies for sure don't like that dead zone in between a time when a mortgage is taken out and another mortgage is satisfied or you know they, they like to have that recorded because then that that's showing that there's not time in between there that a buyer or someone else could come in and sneak some I don't know something they always say what, what can they do I don't know I never could figure it out but you know we do hear about fraud coming through um, from other states uh, so we are very leery about letting anything sit around too long. Very good, thank you, Ellen. Ellen, we've talked a little bit about mortgages and uh, things that convey ownership. Can we talk a little bit about some of the other services that you provide in your office? We also, again, as I said before, we, we do um, keep track of the deeds, or the, excuse me, birth records, birth, marriage, and death records. Um, also, uh, name changes come through our office. Um, and veterans, the veterans, we have the veterans records in our office and we issue those records to the veteran 
or the veteran services as, as requested. Um, we do not charge the veterans for that, that copy that we feel is their, you know, is due to them. Um, some of the other records that we have are uh, certified survey maps. Um, we have subdivision plats. We have um, transportation uh, plats. We have many, many maps and you know um, plats that, that you can look at. That's great. Uh, when somebody wants to obtain a copy of their birth certificate, a certified copy, what's the process that they have to go through? They can, there's a couple ways that they, there's a couple things that they can do. They can come into the office. We're there from 8, 8, 8 o'clock till 5. Um, we have forms available for them to fill out. Um, they give it, fill out the form, show us the proper ID, and um, we look up the record and we make the copies and give them to them. So, like I said, it's about, a, probably about 5 to 10 minutes, depending upon how hard the record is to find. Uh, they also, if they don't want to come down to the office, especially, especially with our construction, um, we do uh, take applications through the mail, and you can get those applications off our website. Okay. And what uh, kind of reasons would people need a birth certificate or a certified copy of their birth certificate? If they want to open up a social, or get a social security number, they need a certified copy of their birth certificate. If they want to get a passport, they need that. Um, schools use uh, <clears throat> view, schools use this um, for sort of uh, verification of age for sports um, or anything like that. Uh, pretty much, it's a it's a kind of a document that is required for identity. Okay. Um, earlier, you mentioned something about genealogists and people coming in to search their family tree. What kind of services do you offer to assist these people in those searches? They come in and they want to, they, we, have, we give them some instruction on, on how to get started and checking the index, indexes. They cannot uh, do per the state rules, laws. They cannot page through the books, but they can check through the indexes. We have them fill out a form. Uh, then they only have to do it once a year. Um, we have them fill out a form, and then after that, they can just sign in, come in. If they have any questions, if they want to view um, the, doc, the birth or death or marriage records, they can do anything prior. I think it's um, like 20 to 30 years. They can view that without assistance. But if they want to view any of the later or you know more current ones, um, there is some confidential information that they cannot see, so we assist them with them. Okay. Um, we've been using our website more and more in the county. What kind of uh, information do you keep on the website and the Register of Deeds portion of, of that site? We have, um, you can get applications for, um, to get your vital records. We have real estate documents, um, or real estate, the rules, the so e-return, Instructions on how to on how to fill out documents. We have um, we have. I'm losing it here. We have um, <laughs> uh, annual report information. Annual report information. We have a picture of the staff. Mm -hmm. That's just very important because there it is. Right. Um, anyways, mm -hmm. we use that quite frequently. Um, also, we have. Um, I'm trying to think of the word and I can't. It's you know the little. Other places you can go to. Oh, okay, the links. Links, okay. links. There. I'm sorry. I apologize for no that. Problem. No, no. Um, it, it's an excellent question. If anybody wants more information that they're not picking up today, it's a great resource to learn more about Register of Deeds or any of the other departments for that matter. And you're also linked then to probably other related professional organizations. Correct, the Department of Revenue, the um, Department of Financial Institutions, um, the there's the Children's Services is on their CCAP. So, yep. What about if somebody wants to chip in and help build a house or, uh, you know, well, assist I didn't, your team? You know, I didn't put that, you that, didn't put that on you know, there? That okay, okay, okay. that's probably a good thing. Can't, can't quite, I, I don't know how I could get away with that one. But. <laughs> Ellen, one other access that, that you also have is a remote access. Could you explain how that works and why that's a little different from the normal website? Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, actually two remote accesses. One is called Laredo, and it is for um, title companies or businesses that 
that don't come into the office and, and they do a lot of re researching. And what they do there is we have, we have a sliding scale that they can purchase minutes from, um, per month uh, for a certain pr amount per month. And um, they also get copies at a reduced, at a reduced price. Um, that is our Laredo, and we have, like I said, most of the time it's or, uh, attorneys or title companies. We have probably about 18 customers that do that hmm. now, and it's convenient for them because they don't have to drive into the office or they can work 24 hours a day if they want to. Um, our other uh, website is not, it's not really ours. It actually does, they just have our information, and that's called Tapestry. And that would be for, like, um, sometimes we have assessors use them if they just are looking up something that's a four ninety nine, five ninety nine fee, um, we get some credit for that when people use that. But it's it's more like some, for for the casual of someone who's looking up just certain property and they have the legal description and. So, so it's four ninety five per search. It's four ninety five or four five ninety five. Okay. I think it went up actually. And then with the Laredo program, what kind of uh, fees are involved? with uh, the, the heavier users there? Um, we have <clears throat> the highest is 400 minutes or $400. Uh, it goes from $75 to $400 depending upon the minutes. Um, some of the were grandfathered in, so they have unlimited time. Okay. Uh, the other ones that aren't gra grandfathered in, anything over their, their allotted time is, is uh, extra fee. So does that's that, does that generate a substantial amount of the revenue that that your office brings in, or is that just a minor part of it? Oh, I, it it does a pretty good job. Okay, it, it does a pretty good job. Right. Um, we pay a certain amount to the uh, software company for, and generally between the two, um, we've actually been doing very well. In fact, uh, that's been um, going steady this year for sure. Okay, excellent. Uh, With that, I'll turn it back over to Adam. Thanks, Mike. Uh, earlier, we talked a little bit about that you're the only department that doesn't have to rely on property tax levy, and you charge fees for making copies or gathering documents. Please touch on that a little bit more. I, I imagine some of our viewers may be wondering, well, if they can do it, why can't more departments do it? Where do you get your authority to charge fees, and, and what's the range? Well, most of that was all put in be place before I, and I'm sure it's been there for a long time, but the uh, Register of Deeds Association is a pretty strong association, and they uh, worked diligently to um, get legislation for their their product, uh, get legislation to, for dollars for their products. Um, everything that we charge is, is statutorily Done. It's by statute, so there's no leeway. You know, even if I wanted to say, okay, I'll give you a copy, I couldn't do that. It's, it's really technically not. Um, but they are consistent throughout the state. Uh, everybody charges. Every county charges the same thing for, for records, and um, so there is no give and take on that. Great explanation. I was hoping you were going to say statutorily required, as county government being an animal of the state. Uh, certainly the register of deeds is and what you charge is what the state allows you to charge and fortunately in your case it's been sufficient to cover operations so far so that's obviously a good thing mm -hmm. what's the range of charges so if someone comes in for a birth certificate versus a uh, copy of a deed uh, what are some different birth marriage and death certificates are twenty dollars a piece with um, any additional copies are three dollars so if you want to you know, two copies would be $23. Mm -hmm. um, to record a document, it's $11 for the first page, and any additional pages, it's $2. So um, if you want a certified copy, if you want copies of your document, say you have a deed or you can't find your deed and you want it, it's a $2 fee for to get that, that and a dollar for any additional copies. Um, mortgage is the same thing. The first page is two dollars. Additional pages are a dollar. Um, and uh, generally, most of your documents, if they're one pages, it's going to be eleven dollars. Usually, you know, eleven between eleven and thirteen dollars to record a deed. Um, and you mentioned earlier you have about a seven hundred thousand dollar budget, so a lot going on in that office. Mm -hmm. And no matter what register of deeds office you go to across the state, you're going to get charged the same for copies or recording birth certificate consistent statewide correct yeah very good very good so 
It's been since 2006. I can't believe how the time flies. It doesn't feel like it's been that long since you've been on the program. It, it has been a while. And what are your impressions? I mean, prior to becoming the Register of Deeds, I don't think you worked for county government in another capacity, or am I wrong? No, I did not. Yeah. I was not in politics at all. Well, I was, but I guess sometimes you just don't really think that. Um, I enjoy what I do. I like helping people, um, like seeing people. Mm -hmm. it's, it's fun to have them come up to the counter and, you know, chat a while. So we try and be, have a, a friendly a relationship in our office that people can come in and they can feel free to ask questions and, you know, talk silly once in a while. Um, but uh, I think we have a really good office. Mm -hmm. My staff is really good. They're, they know what they're doing. They're very, very knowledgeable. And on the most part, you know, the people are pretty, pretty good coming in. So we, before putting your application into the governor and then obviously deciding you liked it and were good at it and wanted to continue, uh, did you ever envision yourself being a, uh, an elected department head working for county government? No, <laughs> I was working in the factory or, you know, in the factory office. But um, no, it probably was not something that I had uh, aspirations for. But um, it's it's good, come in and um, work with wonderful people, and that's that's the way you got to do it. Right. Well, we appreciate the great job you're doing, and glad you're there. Thank you. As uh, certainly all three of us are know very well, and hopefully most of our viewers have begun to appreciate the state budget situation. Uh, the state's in a world of hurt financially, uh, 6.5 billion or more deficit. Not new to county government, we've been dealing with these types of operational deficits at the state level since 1995. We're used to at being asked to do more with less. We're used to um, cost shifts and frankly just more of the tough decisions being placed on the shoulders of county government and people like Mike, county board supervisors. You mentioned earlier you have a state association that's been pretty effective in the past and obviously lobbies state legislators for statutory changes. Anything on the horizon or frankly anything currently in play with the governor's budget that you're concerned with or that you or your association have been weighing, weighing in on? Um, Yes, actually there is. The, um, in August of 2007, they, um, the governor increased the uh, fees for birth records, uh, birth, death, and marriage, actually from $12 to 20 and from $7 to 20 respectively. Um, birth records were 12 and they went to 20 um, and death, rec death and marriage went from 7 to 20. And the dollars that were used for that is for a good cause. It, it actually, and that's kind of why the, the association supported it. The, um, the state is implementing an online system and that's a man, federally, federally mandated that they get an online system um, for security purposes. Um, so the dollars were supposed to use, be used for that. Um, the sunset on that was supposed to be July 1st of 2010. They figured they would have enough revenue generated for, to pay for that. Um, the governor now is proposing to raise fees again on the birth, birth, uh, birth, marriage, and death to twenty-four dollars, twenty-three dollars, I think, or twenty-three or twenty-four dollars, and that we are opposed to because the dollars that they want to use for that is is not for the register of deeds. It's or it's not for the programs that it should be for. We feel that. The twenty dollars is even too high. We, you know, the association, you know, just thinks that that is a lot of money. Um, the people that need those records are, you know, sometimes the very same people that they're trying to raise the fees for to, to help. So, mm -hmm. you know, they're kind of paying for it themselves. It's it's really not quite fair. And, and so what, we are opposed to that. And what was it when it went from twelve to twenty, and the and your association supported it? What specifically was the money used for? Was the it specifically was set as, it was supposed to be set as, set aside to for an online system statewide. An online. Online of deed system. Uh, online okay. vital record so system. I'm sorry. Yeah. Directly related. Okay. Directly related to the, and and that's the way the association feels. Sure. That if the if the dollars are used directly or for the office for the for the programs that they're supposed to be used for, right. then they would they but they oppose anything that goes to 
um, Just other goes into services. the general fund, nothing Indeed. related. Right. And, and that's another good distinction for our viewers is that when you have to pass on those increases, whether it's from 12 to 20 or 20 to 24, that isn't necessarily for your operations and the service that you're providing directly. That's being forwarded on to the state for the state to use for its purposes. Is that right? Right. Correct. And it would be, you know, actually in my in my my feeling, if it would even, you know, benefit the county, it would be our counties. It would be beneficial, but it's not. It it isn't going to. I, you know, I mean, they have promised that, you know, that some of the dollars would stay here, but eventually they're just going to take it anyways. And, sure. you know, that's just that little bit of. Um, uh, I'm just a little bit upset about that. Yeah. And you're not alone. Um, the example that Chairman Vandersteen and I often use is the Clerk of Courts office, Nan Todd, you know, one of your peers. Uh, the Clerk of Courts does a lot of important work, although they're dealing with individuals who are paying fines and, and working with the court system. But uh, they've raised their fines and forfeitures over time based on state law. But unfortunately, they don't get to keep that revenue. They pass that all on to the state, and the property taxpayers in Sheboygan County are paying more and more and more to support that department, when if the state allowed them to keep more of that revenue that we're collecting based on the fines and forfeitures of county taxpayers, uh, then they wouldn't essentially be double-dipped. We're passing on taxes or revenue to the state, and they're paying it for it with their property tax. So. Mm -hmm always opportunities for improvement. Mm -hmm. Well, it certainly has been a pleasure to have you with us today. I hope that our viewers got a quick snapshot of the Register of Deeds. Very important work, a wonderful staff, a wonderful leader, and we Thank appreciate you. what you do for Sheboygan County, and we hope you're going to be in this chair for some time to come. Thank, well, thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Next month, we'll have another very important department head with us, our Corporation Council, Carl Bizzing. Carl hasn't been with us for some time as well. As you know, we try to get through the 22 departments. Some have uh, more fires than others, but Carl is certainly one who has his fingers in all the fires because he's helping provide legal support and counsel to all the department heads, the county board, and we'll get a flavor for his roles and responsibilities. So until then, on behalf of Mike Vandersteen and the Sheboygan County Board, thanks for joining us.